the real estate market is going to crash. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the elements that's going to make this a fact. This is not a guess. This is not a, some hyperbole. The real estate market is going to crash. And I'm going to explain to you how sophisticated real estate investors and how non-sophisticated real estate investors are going to react in this market because it's going to be able for some of you to get reduced rent. I know there are people telling you that they're not going to reduce the rent. That's not true. Hey, if this is your first time here, what I want you to do is to go below and get 30 days to 2,500 at hustlerskungfulifeskills.com so you can begin to start your side business. One of the things that is going to happen with this current situation, let me tell you a, a tale of my, when I had my warehouse. And when I was shopping for my warehouse, I knew that my landlord had empty warehouses. They had a portfolio of 35 to 40 warehouses. And I was trying to get into one of these warehouses and I was trying to get them to work a deal and they would not reduce the rent. Regardless of what I said, they wouldn't reduce the rent. And then I got a less expensive space towards the back. Now let's talk about why did my landlord not reduce the rent? First of all, the buildings were paid for. This is very, very important because all of these buildings were in a real, they were in a trust fund for his children. When I wrote my rent check out, I wrote it to the trust fund in the two names of his children. And that's what this name of the trust fund. And this was Mr. Arbazer, my mentor, my landlord was a very sophisticated real estate investor. He made a lot of money. He paid cash for his properties. He put together a trust fund for his children. And those type of real estate investors are not going to reduce rents because of the game of depreciation that they're paying in the lost income game. Let me explain it to you. So what they would do is like, we've got this warehouse for rent on the market for X amount of dollars and we're depreciating the warehouse and we're taking the loss for not being able to rent that warehouse at that market rate. And that's why they wouldn't reduce the rent because it was an income generating proposition because the lack of renters in these warehouses created losses on paper to offset the income that was coming from the warehouses that were rented. You know, and a real estate agent sat down and explained the game to me and everything. Now let's talk about the non-sophisticated investor, which is most of the market because money has been cheap for so long. You have many, many people in the real estate game that don't know what they're doing. And this is where the reduced rent is going to come in because I'm looking to get in the real estate game. 2021 is going to be my year. And before you get in the real estate game, you need to study the market that you want to invest in. You need to know the market. And I've been looking at my market and I have seen many houses that were once for sale. They were tried to turn them into rentals. And I saw a lot of these new investors or new rent landlords reduce the rent of their properties. I see this every day. And th this is one of the things that you got to understand. Like if you're dealing with a sophisticated real estate professional, someone that has reserves, someone that is set up nice, no, they ain't gonna reduce the rent, but there is so many non-sophisticated real estate investors in the market. And I can tell you, even before this pandemic thing started, I would see people who would, you could tell it was an investor. They would get a property, they would try to rehab it. And literally they would try to sell a property unrehabbed. I'm talking about literally, I saw houses that were down to the stud. They were trying to sell for $200,000. These were inexperienced, rookie real estate investors. And I'm telling you that the market is full of people like this. It's full of people who just got some cheap money, got one or two houses and they don't know what they're doing. And this is where the marketplace inefficiencies, this is where you're going to be able to get your deals because the same thing happens when people get into business, you get people, people come to storage auction business and they will sell their best stuff really cheaply and be stuck with the junk. The same thing with the new rookie investors. They're going to operate on price because they haven't built their real estate business to a point 
where they can work on the value proposition as in the case of my landlord, Mr. Arbizer. Right now, you're gonna see, and also, this is what's gonna happen. The first wave, because right now, real estate is still doing fairly well because inventory has been dramatically reduced. Because a lot of people who were selling their houses, they took them off the market, they don't wanna move, they don't wanna deal with this stuff during this pandemic. So this is artificially keeping up the prices. But here's some elements that are about to happen. Airbnb landlords. There are many Airbnb people who have bought Airbnb profits and the properties and they're taking it on the chin right now. They're not making any money and they're gonna start panic selling. That's the first category. The second category is going to be over leveraged real estate professionals. These are people because the money was so cheap, it was, the economy was so-called booming, it started, it continued to work out really well. These are people who are going to move to the second phase of the real estate crash. First the Airbnb people, then the rookie investors, and also the third key component. Right now, this just went into effect, all of these people who took these forbearances. Many of these people are going to get in trouble. So you got Airbnb, the over leveraged investor, and many homeowners. And there's like 4 million people who took the forbearance. And I think every day there are more and more people. So this is going to create probably 12 to 30 many million houses that are going to go on fire sale because these people are not sophisticated real estate investors. If you go over to my YouTube channel and look at Savage Finance, I know a few really sophisticated real estate investor professionals and they're doing fine right now because they bought their properties right. This is one of the things like everyone, like Meet Kevin is a great and entertaining YouTuber and Graham Stephan is a great and entertaining YouTuber. As real estate professionals and investors, they literally suck. If they didn't have the high YouTube income that was coming in, they would not be able to play the real estate games they're playing because they don't know how to buy real estate property. You know, me, Kevin, will go up here and put this stuff. They're paying damn near retail for their property and they call that investing. That, that's not really smart investing because essentially, even though I am not a real estate professional or even a sophisticated real estate investor, I am a sophisticated business person. And I know you make your money when you buy. You don't make your money when you sell, you make your money when you buy. And they don't know how to buy and because they, you know, the blessings of YouTube, and I mean, I think Meet Kevin makes a million a year from YouTube, Graham Stephan makes 1.6 million a year. That's a lot of disposable cash, as well as the other things they have going on. So they're not people you should be looking at for real estate investment advice. I know that's, shots fired but that's the way that i see it because one of the things is if you want to get into the real estate game the most important thing you're going to have to do is buy your properties correctly because if you miss buy a property it can literally bury you and you know if you don't have a million dollar a year income and you go out and buy, miss buy a property it's going to catch up with you it's gonna catch up with you really quickly. It kind of reminds me of when I was in the military and I bought my first car. And before I bought my car, I always had money. I always had money. Then I got that car between the car payment, the high insurance, because I was really young. My car insurance was almost as much as my car payment. I soon saw myself not having as much money as I used to. And this is what's gonna to happen to these people who miss buy property. And this is what's gonna to happen to these people who over leverage. And also, the leverage game is about to crumble, even for some sophisticated real estate professionals who got greedy. They went too far. You will see, and if you want, like if you're out in the market and you want to rent a house, go to a, a single property, uh, one property owner, maybe they own two or three, and start, and like they'll sell you what the rent is before you even go look at the property. It's like, but my budget is this, just email them and see what happens. You will be shocked at how many of them will come down. I'm like, I'm here to tell you, you know, this isn't gonna work for the professional, well-funded, well-heeled, well-positioned investors. That's not gonna work for them because they've got the money to play the game. But 
these see the the, the root, reduced rents is going to be with the re, rookie inexperienced investors because they're going to be desperate for cash they're going to be crazy for cash so if you come in with a good credit score good rental history and just put i'm like seriously hit them up with an offer because one of the things is that many people are trying to run this game on the sophisticated well-positioned real estate professionals that ain't gonna work with them but how much of the market is comprised of these inexperienced noobs i have like been studying real estate for like a year and i have seen it time and time again where people got themselves in over their heads and essentially in the marketplace efficiencies this is where you're going to be able to get these juicy crazy deals i'm serious just start making offers you know if you're looking to rent a house go to zillow do your due diligence make sure that you're dealing with the owner of the house and start making offers this is something i used to do on craigslist whenever i got desperate and the storage auctions drop i would offer people 50 percent of what they were asking just hit them up 50 percent 50 percent and most people said no but a lot of people said yes so I got this item with built-in equity. And when I get in real estate, I'm going to be a shark. I'm going to be making some crazy deals. I'm going to steal their equity. Because you make your money when you buy. You don't make your money when you sell. You make your money when you buy. And if you don't buy incorrectly, I don't care if this is real estate. I don't care if this is resale flipping inventory. You make your money when you buy. And I've been seeing what's going on in my market, the market that I want to invest in, and it's very, very interesting. I've seen a lot of people pull their houses off of the market, turn them into rentals, and I have seen them reduce the, the rate of rent that they will ask for. And we literally, this has happened in literally two months, which tells me that they are desperate for cash. They are desperate, because this is what happened. There's a lot of people who had one house, and they went ahead and bought another house before they sold their old house. You got a lot of people in that situation and they literally have two mortgages. And I don't, I'm, I don't care if you have an high, can, high income, having two mortgages can be crushing. It can actually really, really draw a lot of pain to your lifestyle, having two full mortgages. So you got people who are caught in that. And these people will reduce their rent. They just want to reduce the outflow, the out cash that's coming in there. And I don't know how the forbearance property, forbearance thing works. Will it work if you have multiple properties? Or, you know, because I'm not in forbearance. I didn't ask, I didn't need that. So I don't know how that works. But can you be in forbearance on your primary residence? And can you be on forbearance on your rental residence? That is just a recipe for economic disaster. That is going to be so bad that it's going to be so crazy what's going to happen with these people when these forbearance terms run out. So this is why we're going to have a, a real estate crash that is going to be bigger than what was in 2008 because we have something that we've never, ever had in this country before. Unemployed, we unemployed with 36 million people, 36.6 million people without a job. That is 25% unemployment. We're literally 4% away from 30% unemployment. We will find out as the rest of this month unfolds because 3 million people filed for unemployment last week. And if another 6 million people file for unemployment this month, we will have 30 something percent unemployment. We've never had that before. We've never been there. And that many people because literally 30% of, I mean, seriously, that would be one out of four every worker that doesn't have a job. This is gonna have ramification with car sales. This is gonna have ramification with real estate. This is gonna have ramifications across the whole board with the economy, because it's gonna reduce demand. And with reduced demand, prices come down. I know there are people telling you that real estate prices are not gonna come down. They're gonna keep doing whatever. Right now, the only reason that real estate prices have, and they're actually starting to drop because in the market I looked at, real estate prices have started dropping. The only reason that they had some level of staying power is because so many people pull their houses off the market. And once the Airbnb people start rolling hard, 
once the forbearance people start rolling hard, once the over leveraged real estate investors start rolling hard, because it's going to come in waves and it's just going to be waves of houses and inventory is going to dramatically shoot up. And then it's, you, you're going to have to make some deals. There are like people who want to sell their properties for X. They're going to have to sell their property for Z if they want to sell it or they're not going to sell it. So prices are going to come down and I estimate this is going to be 2021 because there are people who are telling you, because the thing is you got to be careful to listen to blanket advice. Like, you know, someone saying that real estate prices and uh, rental prices are not going to go down. You got to qualify that. And also some of these well positioned seasoned investors, if they've made a, a miscalculation on their leveraging, and if they get into trouble, they will reduce rents. They don't want to, but it's like we get some money or we get no money. I mean, the, the calculation is pretty easy. We want some money versus no money. And if they don't have their portfolio strategically positioned where they can rent this over here, have all these buildings empties and play the depreciation cash flow game, they're going to have to reduce these rents, even they. And that would be the last brick to fall because these guys are well positioned. They have a lot of cash. They have cash reserves. They got good credit. They're in a really good position. But if things continue to get worse, because, you know, who knows what's going to happen next month? Who knows what's going to happen in August? Who knows what's going to happen in September? Right now, we're all just taking it day to day to day. So hopefully, you know, things will get better. And hopefully we will start to transition out of this mess. But even with a transition, let's say we start transitioning out of this September, October, things start to get better. The damage is done. We're probably going to have the lowest GDP on record in 30 or 40 years because of the shutdown of all these companies. And this is something else that's going to happen. And someone hit me up on Facebook that now there's reports that many of these companies that close are not going to reopen. And it's like, who told us that two months ago? I did. I've run a business. I know how much money it takes to run a business. And if you don't have startup capital to restart your business, it ain't opening up. And this is going to keep unemployment relatively high. I feel that many people who lost their jobs will get to go back, but the real deal, the real winners are the people who transition to working at home. That's going to become a permanent fixture in America. You're going to you have people who are literally going to be hired for jobs. They're going to be interviewed over Zoom. They're never going to meet their employer. I know that's wild. They're never going to go in for an interview. They're going to do it from the comfort of home. They're going to get the job. They're going to start working from home. They're never going to go in the office. That's going to become a permanent part of our economy. So I want you guys to understand that if you're getting in real estate, you need to start positioning yourself now for the deals that are going to come in 2021. I mean, literally their stuff is going to be on sale. I know there are people who are saying, no, it ain't going to be on sale. It ain't going to go down. I know investors, I'm here to tell you the money, the deals are going to be with the rookie and inexperienced investors because before the pandemic, I saw deals with these people and they were, I, I saw some crazy stuff, you know, cause I was using Zillow and this one guy had like a property that he, he, he bought and he was trying to renovate and they were, it was at the stud level and it was like great opportunity for an investor. He was trying to sell that for $200,000. There was deals with these because I, I guarantee you because I started to hit him up, but I didn't really because I had so much going on. I didn't feel like doing a rehab, but I started to hit him up with 140 and see what he would do. See what he would do, because one of the things you got to understand in the marketplace inefficiencies, there's going to be so many deals. There's going to be crazy deals. And right now there are people who are flipping properties and doing stuff and they're still getting pretty decent money, but there are people who are trying to sell property and they sitting on them because what this pandemic has done is reduce the number of buyers. I know cause you know, you will see different stuff on there that like you will see that there, you know, demand is up. There's more buyers. People are getting their prices. It also depends upon the real estate zip code because Real estate is local, local, local. 
So it really depends on what's going on in that city, that state, and that area. But I'm here to tell you the crash is coming. It is coming. And how do you get ready for the crash? Right now, you need to be studying your market. You can't wait until 2021 and then study the market because one of the things is I've been studying this Atlanta real estate market for a year, and this is how I know that some people have reduced their rents because I saw, I saw the house was listed the first time, then I saw when they took it off the listing and they turned it into a rental, and then I saw the reduction in the rental rate. You're going to see a lot of people start to panic because even with the states are opening up, we're still having massive layoffs. And you know, if uh, in the May we're at 30 something percent unemployment, I will not be surprised. And that's going to be the catalyst for even more carnage because many of these companies, as I said before, that have closed, they're not gonna open up again. They're not opening back up. So these temporary layoffs are gonna become permanent. And with that, it's going to become a damage to that person's career. As I talked about in the live stream the other day, when a person gets laid off, the longer they're laid off, it seriously impacts future income. So you're going to have less people with less money. You're going to have more people with less money to participate in the economy. And this is just going to drag on the economy. This is going to keep it slow because I'm here to tell you there is not going to be a quick recovery. We're going to be dealing with this for two to three years. And that's if someone comes up with a vaccine, we're still going to be dealing with this because you got to understand the velocity of money. When money is moving, it is making money. Things are fine. Money literally stopped moving for many people. It literally just went ah! and the momentum's gone. The velocity's gone. And this is going to take a whole bunch of energy to get it moving again. And also with these stimulus bill of uh, videos and stuff like, you know, Donald said is DOA. Mitch McConnell said is DOA. They're not even going to consider this bill and the people still making these videos. And I understand that you are hurting. I understand that you want someone to come in and save you. And I'm here to tell you, you need to put your own cape on, put an S on your chest and become your own damn Superman. That's what you got to do because it ain't going to get any better. This thing is going to strategically get a little worse, a little worse because, you know, we've I think we've kind of peaked out at the punch and hopefully we don't have a secondary wave of mass infections because that's going to just tank the economy even further. So hopefully we can avoid that. But what I want you guys to understand, if you want to get into real estate, because there's this wealth transfer that's about to happen, there's going to be this massive wealth transfer. And for the people who are positioned, for the people who have cash, for the people who have reserves, because there's a lot of people like Grant Cardone, I don't keep money in bank, money comes in, I go ahead and put it somewhere to put it to work. Um, that ain't going to work as well as it used to because everyone's going to need to have some reserves. Everyone's going to need to have some reserves, especially if you are operating a business, you will need to have at least one year's of reserves in the bank in this new economic reality. And there are so many people out here who are doing X, Y, and Z, and they're still trying to play in this new economy by the old economy rules. And it just ain't going to work. It's just not going to work. So that's all I got for you savages today. Go below, get 30 days to 2,500. Go below, get the hustler's mindset. And by the love of God, get the money management course. Because that will help you position yourself to learn how to play the game. So there's another video here. Check it out. And I'll see you guys later.